Hey guys, this is Daniel from CNC Labs. Uh, I'm standing in front of the latest revision of the alt mill. So this is gonna be coined the alt mill Mark II or Mark II alt mill. Give you kind of what this new revision is meant to be. Talk about kind of some of the timelines, when this will be available, stuff like that, and any other details. So I guess I'll start off by saying that the machine is largely unchanged. It's still the exact same alt mill. Uh, performance wise is pretty much identical. Nothing drastically has changed. It's just mostly small quality of life improvements for ease of assembly, um, a little bit of more cleanliness. So you can see some of the wire management has been cleaned up a bit. And then a lot of this is also just for manufacturability and kind of fixing some of the issues and challenges we've come across as we've started to ship and produce these alt mills uh, at more scale. We'll dive in and look at some of those changes right now. The first one most notably is the extrusions have been redesigned, all three. Uh, very, very minor change, but uh, the x-axis rail has some new uh, support structure just along the middle section. Uh, this is mostly for making these more manufacturable, reducing the scrap rate that we see just in case surfaces come out of tolerance. And then we do a little bit more machining on these now as well. The other thing that you will see with the new x-axis rail and y-axis rails is that they now have a little catchment feature for the drag chains, so these can no longer kind of wobble out of place. They are actually located into a slot, and you don't have to worry about this kind of flopping around anywhere. The Y-axis rail extrusion, I can also show you. We'll take off this end plate here. Oops. So you can see it's got some webbing now across its center, and you'll also note a bunch of little mounds essentially helping us reduce the likelihood of uh, stripped threads. Obviously, these are assembled mostly by us, so it's mostly an internal QA or QC uh, reliability change to just to decrease our scrap rate and make these uh, go a little bit faster as far as assembly. The other obvious change with the Y-axis rail is that these are no longer using separate dust shields. These actually have their own integrated flange, and you'll see this kind of comes out and protects from any dust ingress, things like that and you won't need to worry about assembling extra parts for that. The last uh, small subtle change I would mention is the cross beams are a little bit different. It just allows use of a twist in T-nut now for the front and rear mounting screws of the table leg. Again, this is just to make assembly a little bit easier for you. The other last notable thing about the cross beam extrusion members is that they're now fully bead blasted and anodized. So you'll get a nice consistent finish on the entire machine, uh, just a little bit more polished and you know, these are gonna get covered by your wasteboard anyway, but it kinda looks nice when you get to get it fully assembled. Previously, the machine was assembled right side up and then was flipped upside down to do your table legs and then was flipped again. Just to kind of reduce one of the steps, we now have redesigned the jointry so that the machine is up assembled upside down once with the table legs put on and flipped only once. So those of you in a small shop or something like that or only one of you, it's just a lot more manageable, less time consuming. Just a small little improvement for assembly. The next thing we can talk about is some of the little uh, electronics and hardware changes. You'll notice the very clean wiring now. This was generally one of the highest requested changes for the alt mill for new revisions was to clean up the wiring a bit. So you can see now we have individually sized cables for every single axis. Your X, Y, Z and the other Y axis cable are all very different now. They're all unique and they will come pre-labeled and much easier to install and you don't get any excess overflow of wiring. The other thing that isn't very obvious here is that the cables will be integrated now with an limit switch cable as well. So you'll only have to run one single harness that will be your motor power, motor signal and limit switch cable all in one pre-braided harness and that'll just come out to the ends and it'll hook up to your limit switches which now have a little pigtail on them. That just makes it a lot easier to route all your wiring and whatnot, and it also allows you to easily replace your limit switch sensor in the future if you ever need to. With our new extrusions, the other nice thing we were able to do is that we can now easily pass these cables through the extrusion without any kind of interference inside the rail and have it come out from the front and rear, and you just see how much cleaner that is. Uh, you don't have to do any kind of like clipping or cable management under the table. Again, it's not really any kind of drastic performance and improvement, but it's just a nice quality of life thing and helps tidy things up a bit. The other thing regarding electronics I would mention is we will now be having uh, plastic molded covers going onto all four motors. So 
that was another thing we heard uh, some feedback about from customers is the concern of uh, protecting the ends of the motors with the way the motor cables come out. So these molded covers will just take the uh, rear exiting cables and reroute them 180 degrees, provide them some cable strain relief, and they'll actually screw on to the back of the motor and physically, mechanically lock the connectors in place, making sure you don't have to worry about anything coming loose ever. There aren't really any concerns with uh, thermal issues with these motors. They generally run very cool, and the molded cover has a lot of ventilation on the back to allow it to continue to dissipate heat. You'll see a new revised SLB EXT controller enclosure. So this has just been beefed up a bit now to give you a bit more freedom and cable space. Um, and it allows routing of the cables into the front of the enclosure, which just kind of blends in with our new cable routing system much nicer. On the new Y-axis rail extrusions, we're also going to be implementing a new crossbeam screw type. So this is now a customized screw that has a really tall head, and it'll basically prevent you from potentially dropping the screw into the extrusion. As far as any uh, Altmill Mark I owners or the original Altmill owners, most of these uh, small changes, like I mentioned, are for kind of ease of manufacturing, just small assembly quality of life things. If you've already built your machine, you probably won't benefit from much of this stuff. But little things here and there, we will probably have uh, spare parts uh, hosted on our store page where you'll be able to buy little things like motor covers, stuff like that. The last thing to talk about, obviously, is uh, a very small price increase in the machine. So the 4x4 size alt mill going from Mark 1 to Mark 2. Pricing will now be going from $39.90 Canadian dollars to $42.90 Canadian dollars. Uh, obviously, this is just to reflect some of the um, revised parts, some of the extra kind of money spent in stuff like custom sized wiring, um, rail finishing, some of the other changes and uh, process for that. Alt Mill 2x4 size has been announced recently and we'll be having that open for order soon. That will be utilizing all of the Alt Mill Mark II design, so that'll just be kind of the most refreshed machine, obviously. The pricing for that we can talk about now, it is going to be $38.90 Canadian dollars. We hope you like all these little improvements. Obviously we take a lot of our customer feedback and commentary just like very seriously, try and improve that everywhere we can. So hopefully you'll enjoy all these small improvements with the Alt Mill Mark II. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.